Azure Active Directory was melting down yesterday. And this lasted for like a period of 10 or so hours. But if you know anything about Microsoft, if you know anything about cloud on Microsoft Azure, you know that Active Directory is kind of an important thing. It's pretty important. And for those of you that don't know, Active Directory, and I have the web page in front of you here, I just kind of, I knew it existed prior to this. I generally knew that it had to do with identity management, but uh, just kind of showing you what this is about. Um, it's uh, basically a single sign on it, identity management. It's at the center of cloud computing for Azure. And it's also at the center of the integrations with things like Office 365 and Microsoft Teams and all of these other things here, which were all affected by this outage, which is crazy to say. So uh, it's interesting to kind of take a look at what went wrong, but needless to say, people were pissed. And um, in notorious Microsoft fashion, the updates were, uh, they were pretty regular. I was kind of watching it live, but um, it was kind of difficult for them to calm the storm of people not able to access their email, not able to access Teams, delays in sending messages. Basically, all these apps in the Microsoft ecosystem were just like done, not working. And identity management is like tier zero, essentially. It's important. If it goes down, like everything else stops working. And the funny thing about this is um, if you took a look at their uh, status page, and I have it in front of you here, this is after the fact, but during the outage, everything, <laughs> pretty much everything here was still green. And they later mentioned that the, the page that allows them to change this or the system that allows them to change this also depends on Active Directory. So they couldn't even update this thing. So everyone was coming here like, oh, everything is green. Everything is OK. Meanwhile, everything is like done. And uh, so it was a very frustrating experience for a lot of different people. Um, so let's talk about, about what happened, because there's always a, a interesting diagnostic in terms of what happened. But first, I want to see what people were saying. How were they actually impacted? So I have Twitter here. This is a little bit after the fact. So I'm on Twitter here, and this is kind of the first hint that something was going wrong. This was at 3.30. Uh, I think this is my time, local, so I'm on Eastern, uh, so 3.30 p.m. That's around uh, 1900 or 1930 UTC. Anyways, what are these people saying? I'm experiencing portal issues due to this. Um, Non-regional, okay, I've been watching the status page. I'd love to file a ticket to get more clarity on some services and offerings may have varying times of recovery. I can log into Azure portal now, but it seems to have forgotten the subscriptions and tenants I should have access to. So a wide variety of different problems, users cannot sign in, this is critical, this guy's pissed off. Um, but basically, these responses are just telling them to go and look at the status page, which was giving some periodic updates. Um, so Azure Active Directory, it's kind of at the center of identity. As I mentioned before, it goes down. Everything else kind of falls apart. Let's understand now uh, exactly what happened. And as of this morning, Microsoft so kindly, so kindly put out a um, preliminary root cause analysis or RCA for short to tell the world basically what happened. And I believe this issue actually happened like a few weeks ago or something like that, this exact same issue. And this is typical. <laughs> Typically when, when these big issues happen, there's a rush to deploy a fix or a change to prevent it from happening. And I've seen this in my own work and other teams that I've worked with. And the thing that they put in place to fix the original issue actually causes another problem. So like at face value, it may look like, oh, it's the same problem. Like, oh, Microsoft can't learn. But really, like it's it's deeper than that. It's not so black and white. So let's uh, let's look at, at this a little bit. I'm just zooming into let me move my big head to out of the way so that uh, you can actually see what I'm showing you here. All right. So what are we seeing? Preliminary root cause analysis, authentication errors across multiple Microsoft services. And just as a very quick reminder, authentication versus authorization. Uh, authentication confirms users are who they say they are. And authorization gives users permission to access a resource. I always get confused about these. I'm sure other people do. Uh, but it's just something that I can't stick in my brain. So they were having problems with authentication here. So it's the portion of uh, confirming users are who they say they are. So what happened here? So between 1900 UTC, which if you recall, is about 30 minutes um, before this, uh, which is when they, they kind of let out this update here. So between 1900 UTC 
And, uh, approximately on March 15th, which was yesterday in 925, uh, customers may have encountered errors performing authentication operations for any Microsoft and third party applications that depend on Azure Active Directory for authentication. Third party applications. So anyone else that is using AD as their authentication mechanism, done. Oh, and by the way, this is a global service. Some of you may have asked, like, maybe you're wondering, why is this a big deal? Well, most applications have a stack of services. For example, you may have a North America stack, a South America stack, a Europe stack, a Far East Asia stack, an Australia stack, and they separate their application out into these little cells um, that are called stacks. And so that way, if something goes wrong in one of them, you're not impacting everyone in the world. Active Directory is a global service. And what global service means is that there's no concept of stacks. It's just one system that manages and governs the entire world. And for certain applications, this makes sense. And identity is one of those things because a person like a person can't exist in North America and Europe at the same time. There's only one instance of a person that exists, regardless of where they are in the physical world. This is one of the reasons why um, this is set up as a global service and why this was such a big problem. The blast radius, blast radius is the term that people use to, to denote um, what's the impact, what's the size of the impact, who is impacted um, and where. The blast radius was quite large for this because it was a global service and because it was what I call tier zero um, in the Microsoft domain um, because it's at the center of everything. Anyways, uh, where were we here? Um, customers may have encountered errors performing authentication operations for any Microsoft and third party applications that depend on AD for authentication. Wow, that sucks. Who is impacted? Azure Admin Portal, Teams, Exchange, Azure Key Vault, SharePoint, Storage, and other major applications have recovered. Holy man, I thought I was never going to stop reading there. Uh, any customers experiencing residual impact will continue to receive updates regarding these via Azure Service Health notifications. I really hope this actually works this time. Uh, not poking fun, but hopefully this doesn't depend on AD to actually show itself. Anyways, um, preliminary root cause. What actually happened? Why did this whole thing go wrong? So let's walk through what went on here. So the preliminary analysis of this incident shows that an error occurred in the rotation of keys used to support AD, AD's use of OpenID and other identity standard protocols for cryptographic signing operations. So a lot of these uh, systems have like a concept of a public key and a private key. If you know certificates, this will be very familiar. Uh, every so often they rotate their keys there. It could be public or private, but they rotate them just in case like someone gains access to that. Um, even if they do, they'll only have access for a short period of time in between the, the duration of the rotates. So this is just like a standard protocol for um, maintaining good security hygiene on any any application. But, you know, this is at another level. This is at an Azure level, which is much larger than anything we run um, in, in our businesses. As part of standard security hygiene, an automated system on a time based schedule removes keys that are no longer in use. That makes sense. If you think about this, if you have some keys that are set up for an application every, I don't know, week or so or, or month, a system will say, hey, this thing has been used for more than a week. It's time to, to recycle these things and it'll just remove it'll create a new key, swap them out, and then eventually it'll kick out the old key so that it doesn't exist anymore. So that's essentially what they're saying here. There's a system that does this automatically. Over the, the last few weeks, a particular key was marked as retain for longer than normal to support a complex cross cloud migration. So they marked a particular key as, hey, automated system, please don't delete this thing because it's important for whatever that they were doing here. This exposed a bug where the automation incorrectly ignored that retain state. Oh, no. Oh, no. Very bad. Very bad leading to it to remove that particular key. So these guys set up a key. They say, hey, please keep this key. Automated system comes in, ignores retain, removes the key anyways. Metadata about the signing keys is published by Azure AD to a global location in line with the Internet Standard Protocols. So metadata. OK, so they're publishing data about those keys to a centralized repository. Once the public metadata was changed, 
at 1900 UTC, applications using these protocols with AD began to pick up the new metadata and stopped trusting tokens slash assertions signed with the key that was removed. At that point, end users were no longer able to access these applications. So they stopped trusting tokens signed with the key that was removed because naturally they were going to be using the new key. At that point, end users were no longer able to access those applications. So basically you have a breakdown in the, the process that cleans up keys and the system that publishes the details of those keys to a centralized metadata repository resulted in some services using the wrong version of the key and then everything blew up and everything melted down. So I was watching this live, by the way. I don't know if this is in the, the whole thing. I'm actually reading this for the first time. Um, but they were initially, they, they pushed out a change and they thought it was the change that triggered it. And so they rolled back the change. Rolling back is just reverting to the previous version. Typically, that's like how these things get resolved, right? The nightmare scenario of any engineer is rolling back something doesn't actually fix it. And like the, the worst case is if you introduce some kind of corruption in the data, then you have to actually go and manually fix things, which is complete hell on earth. This has happened to me many times. Um, and I feel for these guys, honestly, kudos to the engineers that were working on this. This is a super high stress job to be an engineer on these teams, to know that basically your service is at the center of the world in many ways, right? Like so many systems these days rely on this stuff. So kudos to them for actually being quick on this, but uh, they, they rolled it back, that didn't work. And then they started saying, oh, it's something else. They, I don't think they completely understood the problem. They were just kind of giving updates in terms of like what they were doing about the problem. But anyways, uh, that didn't work. And then it still took a long time after. I eventually went to bed and it was still going on. I'm like, I'm not gonna wait for this. Um, anyways, let's go into uh, the mitigation and the next steps. Okay, so mitigation, service telemetry identified the problem and the engineering team was automatically engaged. In other words, some alarms were going off. Good thing that they had alarms. By the way, if you don't have alarms, you should have alarms. Go watch my video on CloudWatch on AWS. You should have alarms. And this kind of speaks to the value of having alarms, automatic engagement. Um, for these kinds of systems, you want some very sensitive alarms, very sensitive to the touch so that they fire after like one minute, things aren't going well, fire an alarm. It's, it's better in these cases to have false positives than to have something that's a real issue that gets swept under the rug. So this is why um, it's a good idea to have these kinds of alarms and to adjust their tolerance depending on uh, the use case. The key removal operation was identified as the cause and the key metadata was rolled back to its prior state. See, that's what I'm talking about. So it started at 1900. They rolled it back. I don't know if this is when they started or completed, probably I don't know, but anyways, it was a few hours later. Okay, so let's move on. Applications need to pick up the rolled back metadata and refresh their caches with the, oh no, with the correct metadata. So each of the applications that was the user or the consumer of this metadata service, which gave them the key, was also affected after the rollback because they cache that thing because no one wants to like complete, like fetch this every time, right? And this kind of exposes the problem um, with, with caching too, just in general, that you know, if these kinds of situations happen where you have a dependency that corrupts their data, you need a way to invalidate your cache. And so each of these individual teams, I'm assuming needed to do like a deployment or needed to have some mechanism to null their cache so that they can actually go and fetch it out again from the, um, the rolled back version of the code. So let's see how that played out. So time to mitigation, let me center this actually. Time to mitigation for individual operations or individual applications varies due to the variety of server implementations that handle caching differently. Azure admin portal teams, Exchange, Key Vault, SharePoint, and other major applications have recovered. A subset of storage resources experienced residual impact due to cached metadata. And we pushed an update to invalidate these entries and force a refresh. The process completed and mitigation for the residually impacted customers was declared at what, like more than 14 hours after the, the start time of the event. 
So this kind of speaks to what I was just saying that caching uh, kind of screwed them over. It's a great thing from an optimization perspective, but now everyone else is impacted and everyone else needs to have a means to, to invalidate their cache. And it takes a long, it can take a long time to invalidate a cache unless you have like a specific operation to do that. Typically how people do that that I've seen is they just bounce their environment. They, they restart, right? And if it's a local cache, got like, I hope it was a local cache. If it was a distributed cache, then it's a whole other ball game that can actually cause other problems. If it's a local cache, you just basically turn it on, turn it off, or turn it off, turn it on. And then um, everything is repulled from the authority. But if it was distributed, then you got to bounce the distributed cache that can have a much larger impact. But anyways, it's always a good idea to have a plan if you're using cache. Make sure you, you have a game plan in terms of how you can invalidate it in cases like this. Uh, okay. So Azure AD is, is in a multi-phase effort to apply additional protections to the backend safe deployment process uh, system to prevent a class of risks, including this problem. The first phase does provide protections for adding a new key, but the remove key component is in its second phase, which is scheduled to be finished by mid-year. A previous Azure AD incident occurred. Yep, this was not long ago. Uh, yeah, 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 this was not long ago. And both incidents are in the class of risk that will be prevented once the multi-phase SDP is completed. So it's good that they're actually, uh, they have a plan to fix this. Hopefully by rolling this out again, ugh, it doesn't happen again. But, you know, there's going to be a microscope under these guys causing two outages in, you know, five, six months. That's not, not good. Not good at all. Okay, so next steps. Uh, yeah, you can still see. We understand how incredibly impactful and unacceptable this is and apologize deeply. We are continuously taking steps to improve the Microsoft Azure platform and our processes to help ensure such incidents do not occur in the future. In the September incident, we indicated our plans to apply additional protections to the AD service backend SDP system to prevent the class of issues identified here. So they have two items here. Um, clearly they're very apologetic and they understood the impact. And that's the scary thing about these cloud providers, by the way, it's like, you know, everyone's moving to the cloud. Like in the past, you had these data centers or, or like local on-premise data centers that, you know, if you went down, you're not impacting everyone. Now, like you basically handing off the complexity and the responsibility to these providers. If they go down, God forbid, you know, everyone's gonna have a bad time. Um, if AWS has had incidents like this, any cloud provider is going to go through incidents like this. Um, it's just a measure of how well they plan for them and how well they react to them when they actually happen. Uh, so what are they actually doing about this to mitigate this? Uh, so the first phase of those STP changes is finished and the second phase is very, <laughs> very carefully <laughs> staged deployment that will finish mid-year. The initial analysis does indicate that once that is fully deployed, it will prevent the type of outage that happened today, as well as the related incident in 2020. In the meantime, additional safeguards have been added to our removal process, which will remain until the second phase deployment is completed. So they're basically uh, being very, very careful unless or until rather this next phase is out. Um, so hopefully this, uh, you know, I won't be making another video on this, but uh, we'll see. I'll cross my fingers because I like making videos. Uh, all right. So what's the second point? In that September incident, we also referred to our rollout of Azure AD backup authentication. That effort is progressing well. Unfortunately, it did not help in the case, in this case, as it provided coverage for token issuance, but did not provide coverage for token validation as that was dependent on the impacted metadata endpoint. So how I'm reading this is that they did something as a result of the September issue. And kind of in the beginning of the video, I was hypothesizing that the problem was a result of the thing that they did to fix the issue in the first place, but that doesn't seem to be the case. This seems to be like just another problem in that area that just happened to line up and it just kind of looks bad. Um, but at least uh, they still have those protections in place. Uh, the root cause analysis investigation relating to this incident is ongoing and a full RCA will be published when this is completed or if any other substantive de details emerge in the interim. So they're going to have a complete root cause analysis. I'm glad because in the past I haven't seen a very um, 
fine tooth granular RCA on Azure uh, or on Microsoft um, web pages here. So I'm I'm glad to, I'm glad to see that they're going to be doing that. But I'm going to keep a close eye on this. Let me know down in the comments if you were impacted. Tell me how you were impacted, and how long you were impacted for. Um, but again, kudos to the engineers. This is a stressful industry, a stressful job. Um, I'm sure they're going to have a very good sleep or they already had a very good sleep. Well, actually, this only got resolved late at night. So um, they're probably still sleeping right now. So kudos to them. Again, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.